few videos ago, I showed you an algorithm to remove an element from an array. It removes the element by shifting each element to the left by one, and then removing the last element. But are we certain that this code is correct? Are we confident that there is no bug inside this code? So today I'll use a new tool named DapTools to test whether our algorithm works correctly or not. Instead of writing few test cases, we'll test our algorithm by running hundreds of tests, which are all generated by the tool, DapTools. So in this video, I'll show you how to install DapTools, how to build smart contracts using the command dapbuild, how to run the test with the command dapptest. I'll also show you how to integrate OpenZeppelin into your project, which is built by DapTools. And finally, I'll test the array algorithm by fuzzing. Fuzzing means that instead of us providing the inputs for the test, the tool will provide random inputs and run hundreds of tests on it. To get started, first install DapTools. The instructions to install DapTools is included in the README. So copy paste and execute these three commands. Once you've installed DapTools, type the command dap to make sure that it is actually installed. Here I've created an empty folder named hello DapTools. To initialize a project with DapTools, the command that you'll have to type is dap init. Notice that this command created a bunch of files. Open the folder source, and there's already some smart contract inside it. A very basic smart contract named hello dap tools, and some examples of how to write tests. To build these smart contracts, open the terminal, and then type dap build. If there's no error, then that means that our smart contract successfully compiled. And we can run the test by typing dap test. Now notice that this smart contract targets Solidity version 0.8.6 and above. But what if you wanted to target Solidity, let's say 0.8.7 and above? How do we do it? To tell dap tools that we want to use Solidity 0.8.7 and above, we'll need to create a file named dot dap rc and inside this file we export an environment variable named dap soak version and we'll set it equal to 0.8.7 so this will tell dap tools to compile a smart contract using solidity version 0.8.7 type dap build again to build a smart contracts and notice that it's downloading solidity 0.8.7 and our smart contract compiled successfully so using dap.rc, you can tell DapTools to target a certain version of Solidity compiler. Next, I'm going to show you how to integrate Open Zeppelin contracts with DapTools. For example, let's say that I have a contract called MyToken, and I want to use the ERC20 contract available from Open Zeppelin. The first thing that you'll need to do is create a npm package.json in this folder, hello DapTools. So you'll do that by typing npm init dash y. This will create a package.json and we will install open zeppelin by typing npm i at open zeppelin slash contracts. Once open zeppelin contracts is installed, we need to tell dap tools where it can find those smart contracts. The open zeppelin smart contracts are located inside node modules, at open zeppelin and then we have our contracts inside here so we need to tell dap tools when we're importing open zeppelin contracts to go look for the contracts inside here and to do that we need to create a file called remapping so inside this project i'll create a file named remappings.txt inside remappings.txt we'll tell dap tools that when we mention at open zeppelin inside my token so import at open zeppelin then we'll tell dap tools to go look for the actual files inside node modules at open zeppelin slash contracts and you can see here that inside node modules at open zeppelin slash contracts the contracts are there and we also tell that when we import ds test this is the test framework contracts available in dap tools then to go look for those contract on their lib ds test dot source and you can see that under the ds test source all the contracts and all of the functions used for the test are available so once we have our remappings.txt filled out we need to tell dap tools to go look for remappings inside this file 
To do that, we'll need to open .dapp.rc again, and then set the environment variable dapp remappings to the content of remappings.txt. Once that is done, we'll be able to compile my token, which uses the open Zeppelin contracts. I made a small mistake. Make sure that remappings is inside the project root. Once remapping.txt is in the correct place, I'll open my terminal and then type dapp build. And our smart contracts compile. So this means that we successfully integrated open Zeppelin contracts into our project. The last thing that I'll show you is how to write tests in dapp tools. So here we have our algorithm that removes one element from an array by shifting each element to the left by one. Let's write a test for this algorithm and see if there's any bugs. We'll create a test by creating a new contract named array remove by shifting dot t dot soul. The dot t prefix tells that tool that this contract is meant only for testing. Inside this file, we'll import two files, dstest test.soul. This is the test framework that we're going to be using and the contract that we're going to be testing, array remove by shifting.soul. We'll create a test contract named test array shift and it's going to inherit the array remove shifting. This is the contract that we're testing and the test framework dstest, which is imported from here. To write a test with that tools, we need to name our function starting with test. So I'll say function test. We'll test the remove algorithm for the array. So I'll name this remove and it's going to be public. And inside here, we'll write our test. First, we'll test our algorithm against the fixed input that we specify. And later I'll show you how to write tests so that DAP tools automatically generates the inputs. So let's say that we have an array with four elements. So I'll say uint brackets memory underscore r is equal to new uint brackets parentheses has four elements. So inside here, I'll put in four. This here, we're initializing the array in memory. And then we'll fill this array with elements one, two, three, and four. We'll say that the index to remove is two. Next, we'll copy this array into the array state variable, which is inside here. We'll do that by saying r is equal to the r from the input. Now, when we remove the second element from this array, we expect the array to be 1, 2, and 4. So we'll create an array with the expected outputs. It's going to be uint brackets private, and I'll name this copy. When we remove the element at second index, our resulting array should be 1, 2, and 4. So we'll copy all of the elements of R into copy, except the index that we're removing. So we'll type 4 uint i equals 0, i less than r dot length, i plus plus. We'll copy all of the elements except the one that we're removing by typing if i is not equal to the index that we're removing, then push the element to the copy array by typing copy push r abide. Next, we'll remove an element at index i from array by typing remove i. After we remove the element, we'll check that the array length is equal to the length of copy by saying assert equal r dot length should be equal to the length of copy. This function assert equal is provided by dstest. Next, we'll check that the elements in the array after remove is equal to the elements in the copy by saying for uint i equals zero, i less than r dot length, i plus plus, and we'll say assert equal r by should be equal to copy a by. Open the terminal and we'll run the test by typing that test. And you can see here that our test passed. Now, just to be sure that we wrote the correct test, I'm going to intentionally break the code by commenting out one of the lines and then typing that test again to make sure that the test fails. 
And you can see here that the test failed. Fix the code, run the test again, and the test is successful. This is a good indicator that we are writing the correct test. If we break the code, the test fails, and if we fix the code, the test passes. Now notice that so far we supply the inputs. We set the array to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and we told that we're going to be removing the second index. This is only one situation that we're testing. Now using DAP tools, it can generate multiple situations and run hundreds of tests for us instead of us manually setting up the situation. And it's also pretty easy to do as well. All we need to do is put this into the input of function test remove. So to do that, we'll say that the first input is an array of uint, uint brackets, memory, r. And then I'll remove this. And the second input will be the index to remove. So I'll say uint i, and then remove this. Now since that tool will be running hundreds of tests, we'll need to reset our copy every time it runs the test. So before we copy the elements into the copy state variable, we'll type delete copy. This will reset the copy array. Now open the terminal and then run the test again. You can see here that the test failed. And the counter example that I gave was the array has one element, zero, and it tried to remove an index at this big number. To fix this problem, we'll tell DAP tools to skip the test if the index to remove is greater than the length of the array. So we'll do that by typing if the index to remove is greater than or equal to the length of the array, then just skip the test by returning. Run the test again, and the test passes. And notice that it ran 100 tests. Now, if you wanted to run more than 100 tests, let's say 1,000 tests, then you would type that test dash dash fuzz runs 1,000. And notice that it's taking longer now to complete the test. Our test passed again, and this time it ran 1,000 tests. So that was an introduction to using DAP tools to compile a smart contract and run some tests on it. The main benefit of using DAP tools is that, first of all, it is really fast. And second, it provides you with a very easy way to FUD your smart contracts. Write a single test and let DAP tools run hundreds of randomly auto-generated test cases.